Hello, hello everyone. Yes, guys, kindly give me a thumbs up if my voice is audible to you all. Hello, Jay, Capsi, and AJ, Riyani, Arya. Okay, thank you, Arya. So, first of all, welcome to our eleven plus geometry masterclass. Okay, now we are here to embark a fantastic voyage into the world of geometry, especially with this area and perimeter problems. So, our objective for today is to cover the mysteries of areas and perimeter. Now, this master class is packed with tips and tricks for you guys to ace your 11 plus exam, especially when it comes into the trickier problems of compound shapes, which comes under area and perimeter. So, today we will be crackling word problems and nobody's business. We will build a solid foundation in the geometry and, most importantly, have some serious mathematical fun along the way. Okay. So, by the end of this adventure, you will be results at Unlocking the secrets of area and perimeter, that is the first main idea. And then feeling confident about this geometric word problem. So whenever you see a certain geometric word problem in your LM plus exam, you have that confidence and that speed which you will develop by practicing to solve the crop question accurately. And then become obsolete with this word problems based on geometry, which can also be interpreted as applications of area and perimeter problems okay again we'll come along with this topic when we see the questions based on it for today so everyone grab your pencils sharpen your minds and get ready to become geometry superstars okay so let's get started all right so here we have our table of contents so you can see we have first we'll be learning area and perimeter of 2d and compound shapes now in this learning session what we will be focusing on is all the important formulas of areas and perimeters of different types of quadrilaterals alongside triangles. Okay. Now, the objective is to learn the formulas, understand what is present in each of the formula and use the formula accurately to solve the question. Okay. So, all these basics will be covered in the learning session, which is the first half of the class. And in the second half of the class, which we particularly name this as a practice session, We'll practice some word problems. Again, those problems will be based on area and perimeter of 2D and compound shapes. So in this practice session, we'll be applying all the formulas we have learned in this learning session and try to solve the questions accurately. Now, once again, to talk more about the questions which has been selected in the practice question, these questions are purely from 11 plus past paper exams. Now, these questions are selected, keeping in mind for the students to have examination approach while solving the questions. So all the vital tips and tricks which will be needed in exams that will be covered in this practice session. And in the end, we will have a very short recap session where we will be summarizing all the key points and tips and tricks. Okay. And also after the end of the class, you would also be receiving a worksheet alongside as well, including this class notes. So that if you miss something up in between or in middle of the class, let's say you would have a backup for it. All right. So let's get going. We start with our learning session on area and perimeter of 2D and compound shapes. Okay. Yes. Here we have area and perimeter of 2D shapes. First of all, what is the perimeter of a shape? Can anyone help me answer? What is the perimeter? Again, it's written over here. It's the sum of length of all its outer edges. What do we mean by outer edges? Yes, Ryan, what do we mean? Can you talk a bit about perimeter? Per perimeter is like you find out all the length of all the sides and then you add them up together to find the per perimeter. Exactly. Very good. Okay, so perimeter is nothing but simply adding up all the lengths of the outside of the shape. That's it. Now, these perimeters always have the same unit as the length. So, the units of perimeter are centimeters or meters or millimeters. Okay, now note down, when we talk about area, there would be some slight difference. What is area is, it basically measures the amount of space inside any of the 2D shape. Okay, so suppose if I consider any simple 2D shape, 
let's say a square all right now what is the area of the square it is nothing but the space inside the square all this black region marked inside this is basically what is area of the square so we have two things one is the perimeter of the square which is sum of all of this length so suppose for a square this is of length 4 cm so what would be the perimeter anyone if the square has a length of 4 cm what would be the perimeter yes fatima um would it be 16 16 cm can you just explain how we arrived at 16 because you have one four and there's four sides in a square so you do mm -hmm. four times four which is 16 very good. So, do you mean squares have all the sides of the same length? That's why you did 4 times 4? Yeah. Good. Okay. So, what's happening? A square has all the four sides of the same length. So, all of this length is 4. So, perimeter would simply be 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. Adding up the lengths of all the sides, it will give us 16 centimeters. Okay. Now, when we talk about area, as I said, this is the overall space inside the 2D shape. Area is always measured in square units. What do we mean by square units? Like millimeter square, centimeter square, or meter square. So you would always see a power of 2 above these units. But can anyone tell me why is this? Why is area measured in square units, whereas perimeter is measured in simple unit of length? Any idea, anyone? Yes, Rishank, would you like to answer? The reason why um, the perimeter is centimeters and not squared um, is because, um, so the outside length is, we can measure it by ruler, and that's why it's centimeters, but why is it centimeters squared for area? It's because we can't measure it in um, the area by ruler or any um, protector or anything? Well, that's one way of saying it. That's a good answer. Yeah. So what does Prishank say is, you can't measure area using a ruler. A ruler has a simple unit scale, which is a unit of length. But area, you can't measure area using a ruler. But let me tell you, Rishank, Suppose I give you a certain rectangle, okay? If I give you a certain rectangle, I am sure that you would be able to figure out the length and width of this rectangle, is it? Using the ruler, you can measure the length and width of the rectangle. But if you already have the length and width of the rectangle, let's say this is 10 centimeters, and let's say this is three centimeters, won't you be able to work out the area of the rectangle as well? Which is simply, Length multiplied by width, isn't it? 10 times 3. This is 30 centimeters square. So just using the ruler, you can figure out the dimensions of the rectangle that would allow you to get the area. Okay. Now, the actual reason why we have square over here is, if you notice in the perimeter, what are we basically doing? Yeah. So let me just show you up. In perimeter, you add up all the lengths. So, you know what happens, guys, when you add up all the lengths? Example, what you're doing is you're adding up 4 centimeters plus 4 centimeters plus 4 centimeters. Let's say for an equilateral triangle, you will get 12 centimeters. You won't get centimeters square. But what happens in area? You multiply the lengths, isn't it? multiply the lengths. So example, suppose if you multiply 4 cm by 2 cm, what would you get along with the units? Yes, Arnav, what would we get? Centimeter squared. Centimeter square. Why square? Because, because yeah. Uh, because uh, when, you're mu when you're multiplying with units, uh, the, uh, the units become square and um, uh, with, with addition, you have the same units, but when you're multiplying, it becomes squared. Very good, Arna. So when you multiply, centimeter multiplied by centimeter, this is actually centimeter square. Okay. So when you have centimeters 
plus centimeters. It is simply centimeters. But when you have centimeter times centimeter, you get centimeter square, right? So that is the main reason why you have square units while figuring out the area and you have normal units of length while you figure out the perimeter. Okay, I hope you guys note up this point. Now let's look at some of the very simple formulas for areas of different shapes. All right, so let's start with a triangle. Now, I guess everyone is familiar with this pretty simple formula of triangle. Maybe probably one of the first formulas for areas which we will ever come across, which is of a triangle. So suppose you have a base. A base is something where a 2D shape stands on. So suppose you have a base and you got this height. Okay. So you have the formula for area as base times height over 2. So the area of formula is simply base times height over 2. Okay. So suppose if you have a triangle, let's say with a base of 4 centimeters and a height, let's say, of 7 centimeters, what would, be the area, what would be the area of this triangle? Yes? Yes, Advita, what would be the area of this triangle? It should be 28 by 2. Okay, is it 28 over 2? And it, how much yeah, is 28. it? 28. Because uh, base multiplied by height divided by 2 is the formula of the area of the triangle. And the height is 7 centimeters and 4 is the base. So 4 times 7 is 28. So 28 by 2. And you can also simplify it. Like four, 14 times 2 is 28. So 14 will be the numerator. And, will, will, and 1 will be the denominator. So 14 will be the answer. Very good. That's very well explained. Including the simplification steps. I really liked it. Good. So the area would eventually be 14 centimeters squared. Again. I want you guys to notice about this height. Okay. So if I see this is any triangle. Okay. Now, if I label this as 5 centimeters and if I label this as 8 centimeters, what will be the area of this triangle? Can I determine the area of this triangle? Please check out. Yes, Abir, can I determine the area of this triangle drawn on the screen? Um. The area would be if there's eight centimeters and there's five centimeters. You need to uh, do, you could say base times height divided by two or half base times height. So uh, eight times five is 40, divide that by two is okay. 20. So 20 centimeters square. 20 centimeters square. Okay. By, well, the formula, you have applied the formula and the calculation correctly. But I doubt okay. one thing in this question. It's Would you guys right. kindly confirm how many of you think right. the answer is correct? Please check. Um, papi, papi. How many of you? Oh, yeah. Yes, kindly raise the hands for those of you guys who think the answer is correct. Okay, I see the number of hands getting reduced. Okay, a lot of guys thanks. Rishma, Kapsi, and Hashim, Hadi, Rohan, Riddhi. You guys think the answer is correct? Well, actually, the answer is not correct. The main reason this answer is not not correct is because this 5 centimeters this is not the height height is this length okay this height considered in the area formulas this is always the perpendicular distance or the line drawn from the top of the vertex from the topmost point to the base and this line makes a right angle with the base this is what is height of the triangle okay not only for this triangle again for any of the formula involving height height is always the perpendicular or perpendicular distance making right angle with the base so height considered in area formulas is always making right angle with the base. Okay. So the height considered in the area of formulas this always makes a right angle with the base. Always remember. So for this example over here, since this is not 5 centimeter, as the height is not 5 centimeter, this would be incorrect. 
we need to know what is the height of the triangle in order to figure out the area. So for this triangle, sadly, we can't determine the area without knowing what is the height of the triangle. Okay. All right. Now let's move to the simple rectangle. What's the formula for area of a rectangle? It's simply length multiplied by width. Okay. Again, what are the properties of rectangles? Can anyone help me? Binuka, would you kindly list out the properties of rectangle? Uh, inside a, rec uh, a rectangle has four right angles. Um, the lengths are the same and the width is also the same. Mm -hmm. Very good. And what about the opposite sides? Are they... What is the angle made by the... A rectangle. What is this angle? Right angle. It has four. Right points. angle. That means this is height or which is the width. So what would be the formula? Length multiplied by width. Okay. Very good, Panika. So the formula for rectangle is length times width. Now let's look out for the square. What does the square have? Similar to rectangle, it all it also has all right angles. Okay. And what's the area of the square? Side multiplied by side. Now you guys must be wondering, why don't we use the term length by describing the dimensions of square? The reason is because length is always considered the biggest length or the biggest dimension. In the square, all the dimensions are same. That's why instead of the word length, we use side. So the area of the square is side multiplied by side. Okay, then we have a parallelogram. All right. Now, what are the properties of parallelogram? Can anyone please help me recollect properties of parallelogram? Yes, Anas. Yeah, I think the properties of parallelogram. Um, that there's two there's two sides um parallel, and yes, only and... two sides. And but and the other ones are correct are not are not parallel. Okay, well that's not the case. So these two are opposite sides, isn't it? These blue ones, these blue opposite sides, these are parallel to each other. And not only these blue opposite lines, but these red lines which I'm drawing right now, this line, this is also parallel to this. So, a parallelogram has opposite parallel sides. Okay, so it has two opposite pairs of parallel sides. One is this blue one, one pair, and the red one makes another set of pair of parallel lines. Suppose it parallel lines they have. What is the other thing they have? Opposite sides are equal as well. Opposite sides are equal. But the formula is not base multiplied by this length. Instead, if you can see, it's base multiplied by height. Again, if you pay close attention, this height actually is making right angle with the base. Okay, so this height is making a right angle with the base. That should be considered as height, not the slant one or the tilted line length. Okay. Now, suppose... If I give you a pretty simple example of a parallelogram, so here we have a parallelogram and let me just mark out. So we have this base as let's say 5 centimeters. We have this length, let's say 7 centimeters and we have this length, let's say 2 centimeters. So what will be the area of this parallelogram? Everyone, kindly share their answers via chat. Let me know what is the correct area of this parallelogram. Okay, Ishan, please recheck your answer. Mahiru, you need to recheck. Be careful, guys. Good. Good, Poppy, Rosie. Hi, very good. Good, Harshit, Adi. Yeah, so I guess a lot of you guys, almost everyone solved it correctly. So the area is base times height over here. Base is 5 centimeters and this height is not 7. Okay, I see a lot of you guys struggled over here in identifying the height. It's actually 2 centimeters, which is this vertical distance making right angle with the base. So it is 5 multiplied by 2, which is 10. 
centimeter square. So overall, the area of the parallelogram is 10 centimeters square. Now moving ahead with the trapezium. Okay, who can help me list out the properties of trapezium? Any volunteers, please? Yes, Rosie, what are the properties of trapezium? Um, how... Properties. Um, how... Okay, let me help you out. Do they have any sides equal? Um, yeah. Which side? Um, uh, the back. slanted side? This one? Yeah, and the opposite. Well, well, it's not necessary. It's not necessary for these two sides to be the same for a trapezium. They have no equal sides. Okay? Well, they can have, but it's not necessary for them to have equal sides. Okay? Do you see any pair of parallel sides, Rosie? Um, what are um, parallel sides? Lines which never intersect each other. Yeah. Yeah. So any pair of parallel sides? Um, yeah, the top line and the bottom line. Yes, very good. The top one, top horizontal line and the bottom horizontal line. So these two opposite lines, these are all parallel to each other. Okay, so they have one pair of parallel side. That's it. Good, Rosie. Parallel side. Now, in this formula for trapezium, it's pretty much similar to the triangle, but just it has two different bases. What I mean by two different bases? The bases are more than one if the size of the bases are not the same. In triangle, you just had one base. In rectangle, you just had one base, which is length, okay? Because this length is equal to this opposite line length, right? In square also, all sides are equal. In parallelogram, this is the base, which is equal to its opposite side, okay? But when we see this trapezium, the one major difference is the opposite sides are not equal. That means it has two bases. So just like formula for triangle, which is half, times base times height over here in trapezium base is this length plus this length which is b okay so it's length a plus length b multiplied by height so base is a plus b we consider two bases of different lengths again the only difference is because in trapezium, opposite sides are not the same. So you have the formula for area as half times sum of parallel sides multiplied by height. Okay. Now, suppose, let's say if we have a simple trapezium. All right. Now, let me add up this as well. Everyone, quickly take 30 seconds. Share me the answers for the area of this trapezium drawn on the screen. Come on quickly, try to use up the above formula. Identify the basis, A and B. Identify the height. Apply the formula. Yes, Jack, kindly recheck your answer. Mahiru, please recheck. Rosie, you too needs to recheck. Joy, you too. Yes, Harshid, you too. See, we need to be very careful while identifying the correct values of the formula, okay? What is the first base? 10. Right? So it's half times A is 10. Other base is opposite line. Line opposite to 10, which is 5. So 10 plus 5. And you times it by height. What should be the height? Whether it would be 8 or 12. It's 8 because height will make a right angle with the base. So it is 8. So this is basically 15 over 2 multiplied by 8. 8 15 is 120 over 2. 120 over 2 is 60 centimeters square. Hence, the correct area is 60 centimeters square. Okay. So, that's how you basically work out the areas of different 2D shapes. Okay. Now, there is one more thing we have, which is compound shapes. Okay. 
Is anyone already aware of what are compound shapes? How many of you guys are familiar with compound shapes? Just give me a thumbs up or raise the hands. Okay, can anyone please help me explain what are compound shapes? Yes, Rishma, would you please guide the class okay. about compound shapes? Compound shapes are, are two, two shapes added together to make one big shape. Hmm. Is it necessary that it should be only two shapes which are added together? I mean, can two it be more than two? It can two be two or more. Okay. So can it be two different rectangles? Or yeah. is it necessary that one should be rectangle or other should be something other than rectangle? They could both be the same shape. They could both be the same shape, right? Very good, Rishma. Mm -hmm. So what are compound shapes? These are just shapes made up of more than one 2D shape. Now that shape can, the other 2D shape can also be, let's say, two rectangles of different dimensions or two squares or a rectangle and a square or a square and a trapezium or on any sort of possibility of a combination of more than one 2D shape. Okay. So these are all compound shapes. Let's say if I have this square. And in this inside the square, if I try to add such sort of triangle, again, this is called a compound shape. Now, in this triangle, suppose if I want to add up a rectangle like this, okay, again, it's another compound shape. Or suppose if I want to add another trapezium, okay, so if I want to add another trapezium or let's say a quadrilateral, I will add like this, which is basically a parallelogram. So, see. I have triangle, one is square, rectangle, and a parallelogram. So all these four shapes, A, B, C, and D added together to get a different compound shape. Okay. Now, here we need to be very careful. For to figure out the perimeter of the compound shapes. Okay. So if I just select the first two shapes. All right. Suppose this has a length of 5. 5, 5, 5, and 5. Okay. And if I want to add, find the perimeter. Okay. So I know what is the perimeter of the triangle. For the triangle, perimeter is 5 plus 5 plus 5. It is 10. For the perimeter of the square, it is 5 multiplied by 4, which is 20. So my perimeter is 30 centimeters. Okay. Now, if you observe the way I calculated the perimeter for this shape, can anyone tell me is my answer is correct or not? Would you guys confirm? Okay, let's take a poll. How many of you guys think my working out of perimeter is accurately correct? Please raise up the hand if you think you, I'm correct. Well, there are quite few students, only six to five students who think I'm correct. Okay, well, that would definitely mean I'm wrong somewhere, isn't it? So let me read out what is perimeter. So, perimeter of compound shape is sum of lengths of all the outer edges. See, here I did committed an error. It says the perimeter is sum of lengths of all outer edges. What do we mean by outer edges is all the outside lengths should only be added. So what I considered, what I did wrong was, this is an outside length, this is also an outside length, this, this and this as well. But I have also included these two lengths in my perimeter workout. The lengths which is in between this length, they should not be considered. So overall, my correct perimeter would be all the all of the sum of outer lengths, this one. So it will be 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, which is 5 multiplied by 5, simply giving us 25 centimeters. So this is correct. This is incorrect. So always remember, perimeter is simply sum of all the lengths lying outside of the compound shape. Okay. Don't, mis don't misinterpret perimeter by the def don't, by don't get taken away by the definition and misinterpret and end up adding the lens which is inside of the shape. Okay. So perimeter should be always calculated by adding up lens of outer sides of the shape. But when you try to figure out the area, how can you work out? What you can do is first find the area of the shape A. Okay. First find the area of the shape A. Then find the area of the shape B and then just add up. What you are basically doing is you are just trying to break down this compound shape into simple 2D shape. That's it. Okay. 
So what will be the area of the compound shape? It's simply breaking down the area of two different 2D shapes and then adding up. That's how you figure out the area of compound shapes. Okay. Let's check out one question on compound shape. Work out the perimeter and area of the 2D shape shown below. Okay. Everyone take a minute and try to work this question out. Okay, we'll try to check out the question and your answers as well alongside. I right, take one minute for perimeter and one for the area. Okay, sorry for that. So we got 10 centimeters, then we got nine centimeters followed by six. And now one length is missing over here, which is this length on the top. What could this possibly be? Bottom one is 10, this is 10, and this is six. So this length would definitely be 10, take away six, which is four, right? And similarly, this vertical length, this would simply be 9 take away 3, which is 6 centimeters. Right? So, perimeter would be adding up all the outer length, starting from here, going clockwise. 4 plus 6 plus 6 plus 3 plus 10 plus finally 19. So, 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 6 is 16. 16 plus 3 is 19. 19 plus 10 is 29. And 29 plus 19 is how much? This is 48 centimeters, right? So what is the perimeter of the shape? Perimeter of the shape is 48 centimeters. All right. Then what is the area of the shape? How would you determine the area? All we need to do is just divide this into two rectangles. That's it. So let's call this as rectangle A and let's call this as rectangle B. Okay. Yeah. And again, over here, where is this 19 come from? This is actually 9, isn't it? So, this is not 19, this is 9. So, perimeter would, I guess, it would be 38 centimeters, right? 6 plus 4, 10, 10 plus 6, 16, plus 3, 19, plus 10, 29, plus 9 is 38. And for the area, what is the area of A? It is a rectangle with length 4 and width 6. So, 4 multiplied by 6, which is 24 centimeters square. What is the area of B? We have length as 10, width as 3. So, 10 multiplied by 3, which is 30 centimeters square. So what will be the total area of compound shape? It would be A plus B, which is 24 plus 30, giving you 54 centimeters square. So the total area of the compound shape or the 2D shape given is 54 centimeters square. And the perimeter is 36 centimeters. Again, one thing where we need to be very careful is while dealing with the units as well. Okay. Perimeter is always measured in units of length centimeters, while area is measured in square units. So this was all about the learning session in perimeter and area of 2D and compound shapes. So we got different formulas overall for areas of triangle, then for squares, rectangle, trapezium, and parallelogram. One important thing to note in all of these area formulas is height. The height considered in the area formulas is always this perpendicular distance. What do you mean by perpendicular distance? The line, which is straight vertical line drawn from the top of the vertex to the base of the shape. And this line makes right angle with the base. Okay. So that is the height. So don't identify incorrect height using the geometric figure and end up solving the answer inaccurately. Okay. So keeping that in mind, let's now move ahead with the practice questions. But before moving ahead, let me ask you guys if you have any doubts or queries. Only the person with doubts should keep the hands raised. The rest all can drop down their hands so that I could identify. Yes, Benuka, you got a doubt? Yes, sir. Yes, you got a doubt? Your hand is being raised? Uh, sir, uh, no, sir, I don't have a doubt. It was an accident. No, no issues. Yes, Anas, you got a doubt? Yeah. So, so I, don't I don't understand on... But um, how you work out the trapezium? For trapezium, okay, okay. So stay unmuted. So suppose this is a trapezium. Which of which of these? Suppose let me name this as A, B, A. This is B. This is C, and this is D. Anas, would you like to tell me which of these yeah. are the bases of trapezium? A and B. A and B. You know these are opposite parallel sides, which are the bases. Okay. What is the formula for area of a triangle? A, a plus B. For a triangle. For a triangle. It is half time. times base times height. Am I correct? Is this the area of a triangle? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, what is the base for trapezium A and B? Two bases, isn't it? 
Yes. Yes. What is the sum of the two bases? It's A plus B. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so my formula for trapezium would be half base would be A plus B. A plus B multiplied by height. Does this make sense? Yes. Yes. And what would be the height? Would my height, would my height be either of C or D? It would be D. No, it would, it would be neither of D or C. The reason is my height would always be drawn from top of the vertex to the base. And this height should make a right angle like this. Okay. So now this right angle or this vertical line making right angle with base, this is as this is my height. It's not D, it's not C. So not any of the lines which are tilted, okay, will be considered as the height. All right. So these are the two takeaway points which you could remember. Does that answer your query, Anis? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now let's quickly start up the learning session. Here we have the first question on the screen. So let me read this one out. The net of the cube, it is made such that each side of the cube measures seven centimeters. Okay. What you are asked, you are asked to work out the perimeter of the net of the cube. Now, before moving to this question, what is the net of a shape? Anybody? Yes, Nagul, what is the net of a shape? The net of a, of a shape is, base, is basically a shape that folds to make another 3D shape. Very good. So, it is the shape, okay, the net is something, it's sort of a 2D shape, but when you try to fold this 2D shape, you would get a 3D shape or a three-dimensional shape after folding up the 2D shape. Okay. So if you fold this, if to fold this shape over here, which is shown with the, alongside the squares, alongside the vertices or the edges of the square, if you try to fold this shape, you would end up getting a cube. That's why this shape is called the net of a cube. Okay. Now, what is given in net of the cube? Is it is made such that each side is seven centimeters. So each squares, if you see along over here, each squares is seven centimeters. Okay. Now what is asked in the question? What you are asked is to work out the perimeter of the net of the shape. Okay. So what is the perimeter of this shape? What do you need to do? Again, this shape is not a net of a cube, but let me make this a net. It's a slightly correct. Because a net of the cube has how many faces? Yeah. How many faces does the net of a cube have? Anyone? Yes, Priscilla? Um, um, that's not my name, by the way. Um, oh. You have to do 16 times 7. 16 times 7? But are you sure the given shape is the net of a cube? That's what is my question. The, the net of the cube has six, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 16, 16 sides of 7 centimeters. 16 sides of 7 centimeters? Okay, first of all, that's correct. Okay, for this shape, but this is actually not the net of a cube. Let me just make it a net, would be more or less like this. Okay. So if I just select this rectangle, this is basically my net of a cube. Okay, because a cube only has six faces one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, to find the perimeter, what would it be? As our friend already informed, it is sum of all the sides. So this is seven, this is also seven, this is seven, 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 okay. Again, I won't be considering any of the line or the edge which is inside of the shape. So it is all outside. If I start from here, seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So how many, how many times seven I need to add? Fourteen times. So the perimeter would be? 14 multiplied by 7. Okay. So this is 98. So the perimeter of the perimeter of this given shape or the given cube is 98. Again, not forgetting the units, it is centimeters. Hence the perimeter is 98 centimeters. Again, this was a pretty simple problem. So you guys are expected to solve it under a minute. So you need to ensure you have that much of practice. Okay. And it's a pretty simple medium level problem, not that easy as you need to figure out how many times you need to add up. All right, let's move to the another question. Which of the two shapes have the greater area? This is what you need to figure out. Okay. And again, each of these square have the side of one centimeter. So this is one centimeter. This length is also one centimeter. So all we need to do is figure out area of shape A 
and then area of B. And eventually we need to compare to check which of the two shapes have greater area. Okay. So would everyone like to try this question? Take a minute, try to solve this one. Be careful while you count the number of squares in A and in B. Okay. And two triangles would make one square. All right. Yes, try this one now. Okay. So if we pay a close attention, shape A has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen full squares followed by one, two, three, four. Four triangles would be two squares. So fourteen plus two, which is sixteen centimeters square. Right. What about for shape B? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 full squares plus how many triangles? 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you have 5, 6, and 7, and 8. So 8 triangles, that means 4 squares. So 12 plus 4, which is how much? 16. Let us recheck. Is it 16 for shape B as well? Yes. So, if you once again count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, then you have these two as 15 and 16. For B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and these two is 13, this two is 14, this two is 15, and this two is 16. So, both the shapes have the same area, all right? And this was also a pretty simple problem. This would have been solved in 1 minute 30 seconds. This extra 30 seconds is for you guys to count up the number of squares and triangles. Again, this is a pretty simple medium level problem. Only one thing where students can make mistakes over here is by incorrectly working out the number of triangles or squares. That's it. Okay, let's move to the third question. Here we are asked to work out the area of the shaded region. Now, this shape, if you see closely, let me just increase the zoom. In this shape, you can see there is one rectangle followed by another rectangle. And then you are asked to work out the area of the shaded region. Can anyone help me with the approach of how can we solve this one? Yes, Shailesh, would you please explain the class? How can we figure out the area of the shaded region? So, we first find out what the area on the first rectangle, which is 55 meters squared. Okay. Then we find out... The white area, which is 24, when we minus 55 minus 24, you get 30, mm -hmm. we, we get 31. 31? So is 31 the shaded area or you need to add up? 31 is the shaded area of the first rectangle. Then mm -hmm. we find out the second rectangle, which is which is 40 centimeters squared. Then we add it up together to get 71 centimeters squared. Very good. Excellent. Okay. What is we require is? this shaded area but alongside we also have this white areas so what we can do we can first work out the area of the outer left rectangle okay let's call this as rectangle a what is area of a it is length multiplied by width isn't it so it is 11 times 5 which is 55 meters square right then in this region you have these pathway sort of thing where inside this pathway you can see another rectangle. Let's call this B. What is the area of rectangle B? 3 times 8. 3 times 8 is 24 meters square. So what will be the area of the shaded left half? Shaded left half. This would be A take away B. Right? So this will give us this area. All this area. Now A take away B is how much? 55. Take away 24. This is 31 meter square okay now if we have worked out this area what is this another shaded area this region let's call this as c what is the area of c which is again which is simply area of rectangle which is 8 multiplied by 5 this is 40 meter square right now what do you want you want the shaded left half area which is in purple plus this green colored shaded area so which is 31 meter square plus 40 meter square hence Shaded area is 31 plus 40, which is 71 meters square. Hence, the shaded area is 71 meters square. All right. So, so all this 
all these small areas, all these small triangles, or your ability to break down the big shape into smaller shapes, that's what makes it count. Okay. So visualize the shape, figure out what will be the shaded area, what area you need to add or subtract to get to your final answer. Now, again, this is one of the medium level problems, high medium level, and you guys can be given an estimate of total two minutes to solve. Again, why two minutes? This question is pretty easy because sometimes it might get difficult for you to figure out which area you need to add and subtract. Okay. So think about the problem, try to break down into smaller shapes, visualize, and then end up calculating. Calculation should always be the last step. Okay, now moving ahead to the next question. Here we have question number four. Okay. So let me read this for now. We are given four strips of paper. Now these are stuck on the table as shown. So you got a table, and in this table, you have these four strips of paper. This is one strip aligned horizontally followed by the second. Then you got two strips aligned vertically. Each one is a rectangle, which is 15 centimeters long, three centimeters wide. You are asked to figure out what area of the table is covered. Is covered. What does that mean? This means you are asked to figure out this area, this overall area, okay. this overall area. This total area of these four rectangular strips aligned in this fashion. This is what you need to work out. Now, wouldn't this, wouldn't the answer for this question be simply four times area of rectangle, which is four times 15 times three, I guess this is 45 and 45 times four is 180 centimeters square. Is this area correct? Please check. Raise up the hand if you think the area figured out is correct for the table. Now, well, I see a lot of the hands being raised. So let me tell you guys, this is not correct, incorrect. Because if you pay a close attention, you got this area, these two areas of squares, which I'm removing, these are added twice if I work out in this way. These areas are added twice, right? So you know what I need to do? I need to take away these four areas, A, B, C, and D. I need to remove this from 180 to get the area of the strips, okay? Now, in order to do so, I should know what are the dimensions. This is the width. What is my width given? My width is given as three for the rectangle. And again, for this length, this is also my width, which is again given as three. So area of A is nine, B is nine, C is nine, and D is nine. How nine? Three times three. So what is the sum of all four areas? A plus B plus C plus D, nine multiplied by four, which is 36 centimeters square. So this four is 36 centimeters square. I need to, I need to figure out my required area. That is simply 180. Take away 36 centimeters square. By subtracting because I, multi I added this area twice while figuring out the total area of four rectangular strips. So it would be 180, take away 36, which will be 144 centimeters square. Hence the final answer is 144 centimeters square. Okay. Now this can be considered as one of the tough level problems where you need to identify the missing dimensions of these squares and remove this area. It's a hard level problem, but you guys are expected to solve it under two minutes. Okay. All right. Now let's just have a very short and quick recap session to summarize what all the important things we have learned. So starting with the area and perimeter, what is perimeter? It is sum of length of outer edges. Okay, now these outer edges play a very vital role when you start figuring out perimeter of compound shapes. So there you need to ensure you are only adding up the outer lengths and you are leaving out the lengths which are inside of the overall compound shape. Okay, and then what is the area? It is the measure of space inside the 2D shape or the total amount of space in the 2D shape. Area is always measured in square units. It is because when you add two units, you get a perimeter that is the units of length but when you multiply two units happens in case of area you will get squared unit this is why area is measured in squared units and again what are these compound shapes compound shapes these are made up of more than one 2d shapes and to find the area and perimeter of compound shapes for perimeter only add up the outer edges 
But when you find the area of the compound shape, you break down the compound shape into smaller 2D shapes and then add up the area. So for perimeter, you only add up the outer lens of the shape. For area, you break it down into smaller shapes, find the area of each shape individually by applying the correct formula and then add up. And one more important point which we forgot to mention in summary is considering height in area formulas. This height is always a vertical line making right angle with the base. That is very important. Okay, as we have seen, a lot of students have made errors while figuring out the areas initially by miss by miscorrectly identifying the height. So always remember height is always the vertical line making right angle with the base. Okay. So I thank you everyone for joining up our free masterclass session. Okay. Now, in case you got any questions, you can email or WhatsApp. But now we have arranged a question and answer session where we will request all the parents to join up the Q&A session. Also, you can further use up this 30% off coupon code to get on to a variety of products in our site. Now, I would like to request Akansha, our product manager of the Pi Academy, to start up and commence with our question and answer session. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sneharsh. And thank you guys for attending the masterclass. As a big thank you, we are uh, hosting, we are sending a coupon code, which is master30. You can use it and uh, you can explore Pi Academy website and get a 30% off. And we would be sending the lecture notes that Sneharsh has used today, along with the 11 plus max topic wise worksheet bank to you over email. So in the 11 plus topic wise worksheet bank, you would see a topic-wise list of various worksheets that we have put together uh, depending on the last 10 years of questions that have been asked by the top grammar and independent schools. And using this worksheet, you can practice topic-wise questions. So for example, if you want to practice fractions, you would just click on fractions and go to that particular section of the worksheet and you can solve it. And these worksheets come with the answers included within them. So once you're done solving the worksheets, you can take a quick look at the answer and see whether you have gotten it right. And if you're more comfortable having the hard copy of this worksheet, you can always download it using the download button. So we would be sending you the worksheets over email and uh, you can use the coupon code, which is master30. You can explore Pi Academy's website and get a flat 30% off. And one of the most interesting things that we have recently launched are the 11 plus exam Easter courses. So you can check out our Easter courses. We would be adding more courses in this section. So there would be comprehension, creative writing, geometry, algebra, and verbal reasoning and nonverbal reasoning courses. So you can use the master 30 coupon code and get an extra 30% off on the courses. And for those of you who are looking for more topic wise practice, so for example, today we had the geometry masterclass. So if you're looking to practice geometry questions in particular, you can check out our 11 plus max topic wise questions bank. And over here on the right side, you can see we have the list of topics listed down. So you can go through the topic of your choice. You can see there is algebra, there is statistics, ratios, and here you can see there are geometry questions. And there are around a thousand questions within geometry listed on the website. So you can click on the topic of your choice and it would take you to the topic wise page for that particular topic. And as you can see, we provide the question, we provide the time guidance. So we basically tell you in how many minutes you're supposed to be solving that question. We also tell you how many various subtopics have been included in this particular question. And this is a very uh, important indicator because it tells you the difficulty level of the question. So if there are multiple concepts that have been put together in a particular question, it tends to be more difficult. So if you are looking to further strengthen your geometry concepts, Check out Pi Academy's 11 plus max topic wise worksheets bank. There are around 10,000 questions. As you can see, the questions are free for us all to view. You don't have to be subscribed to view the questions. And these questions are from the real past papers of the top grammar and independent schools. And if you wish to purchase the subscription and access the answers, you can use today's coupon code, which is master30 and you would get an extra 30% off. 
on the 11 plus maths topic wise questions bank. So we have a lot of thank yous here for Snehash. So thank you, Snehash. Thank you. So we request parents to drop any questions that you would have about uh, how to prepare for 11 plus maths or non-verbal reasoning. Snehash uh, handles these two subjects. And which pie can be resources would be best for you? So meanwhile, I will just give you a quick look into what we have here at Pi Academy. Under 11 plus papers, you would see that we have all the past papers and practice papers that top grammar and independent schools have asked in the past multiple years. So we have maths, English, verbal reasoning, non-verbal reasoning, SPAG, vocabulary, literary devices, comprehension pieces, creative writing pieces. And those of you who are looking for a more board specific practice, you can click on our 11 plus practice papers. And here we have GLCEM, ISCB, CSSE and SAT board specific papers. So you can view the past papers, you can view the board specific practice papers. And those of you who are looking for a more visual way for learning, you can check out our 11 plus video courses. So these video courses are pre-recorded courses, which are in the subjects comprehension, creative writing, algebra, geometry, and fractions. So you can use today's Master 30 coupon code to get an extra 30% off on all these 11 plus video courses. So just to give you a brief uh, look into what these video courses consist of. So basically they make sure that they cover the complete 11 plus syllabus for the given subject. And we also have many homeworks and quizzes to make sure that you are practicing as you learn and that this is a application based course course where it's not just the concept which is being taught, but you are also actively working on your skills. So as you can see, there are around uh, 26 concept building video courses, lots of homeworks in the maths courses, you would be able to see that we have many mental math exercises because we know children enjoy solving short puzzles. So you can check out the 11 plus video courses if you are looking for a more visual way of learning. So as you can see, this is the 11 plus algebra advanced course. So you can uh, check out both the algebra beginners course and the algebra advanced course. This would give you a very well-rounded approach to the algebra subtopic. So Divine has a question, isn't creative writing being removed from the 11 plus? So this again, uh, the concept, the basically depends on the school which is conducting. There are still many independent schools which do require creative writing pieces. And in the case of a tie between two students, creative writing pieces are used to break the tie and essentially uh, figure out which student would be deserving the seat in the particular grammar school. So working on your creative writing skills would always help you, not just with the 11 plus exams uh, in focus, but also later on when you are attempting for other examinations, your GCSEs, your A-levels. Working on these skills right now would give you an amazing head start compared to your peers. So on Pi Academy, as you can uh, see, we have different types of creative writing pieces, there is descriptive creative writing, persuasive writing, then we move on to narrative writing. And then finally, we have argumentative writing and expository writing. So there are around 23 creative writing pieces. You can check them out. We have a sample creative writing paper here. You can click on it. It's for free. You can download it and you can follow the PEE technique build uh, the beginning, middle, and end, and write your creative writing piece here. So this is free for all to check out and download. And you can use this to practice your creative writing. And on Pi Academy, when you click on the answer section, you would see that we have also provided you with a checklist. And following the checklist, you can structure your creative writing answer. So as you can see here, we have mentioned uh, the question, what is the hint, what is the plan that you should follow to write the answer? And what is the model answer? And along with this, we have also included something called a poor response. So a poor response basically means how you should not be answering the question. So you can check out the poor response and see which sections of the plan are missing from the poor response. And so that you can, not, so that you can uh, avoid such mistakes later. And we also have a checklist 
under creative writing. And this is free for all of us to view and download. So in this checklist, we show you how to plan your writing. So there has to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. And then we also talk about the writing structure, the sentence structure. We talk about vocabulary. We make sure that you have used language techniques, figurative language, and that you've used the right spelling and grammar. So you can use today's coupon code, which is master30 on the creative writing past papers too. Prakash has a question, will this recording be shared? Yes, we will be sharing this recording. We would be uploading it on our YouTube channel. So it would be great if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel. All our free masterclasses and webinars are uploaded on YouTube for our audience to view at a later date. So yes, stay tuned and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. So any other questions that you could have about the 11 plus exams, how do we approach it? Any questions about maths? You can feel free to drop it in the comment section. Or if you have a question after the masterclass, feel free to chat to us on our chat support. So on Pi Academy website, you can see there is a tiny little box over here. So when you click on it, you would be able to chat with us on our chat support. If you have any doubts, any guidance that you need, feel free to drop us a message and we would take on from there. So for those of you who are starting with the 11 plus exam preparation in this month, in the month of March, the best way forward would be to check out the 11 plus video courses. So the video courses would give you a bird's eye point of view of the complete syllabus. It would tell you what you are supposed to be uh, prepared for. And you can see the major subjects are being covered, comprehension, creative writing, algebra, geometry, fractions. So with the video courses, you would get uh, all the knowledge that you need in a short capsule format with lots of homework and lots of practice questions. So start with the video courses. It would create the base, the foundation for your concepts. And once you're done with that, you can move on to practicing the past paper questions. So depending on the school that you're targeting, depending on the subjects that the school is going to be testing you in, you can uh, select which past paper questions make more sense to you. Shalish has a question, which is the best package for revision? So we have uh, created just the right package for that. It is called 11 plus revision and practice. So these are short 10 minute tests, which you can give to your child throughout the year. You do not have to wait for the exam to come closer to start revising for the concepts. So these are very short 10 minute uh, tests. They make sure that the child does not get uh, too overwhelmed with the uh, very long sit tests and they are able to revise the top concepts within 10 minutes. So as you can see, we have uh, revision tests in English. So here we have grammar. Again, within the topic of grammar, we have further segregated it down into subtopics. As you can see, there are nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, and so on. So we have grammar, we have punctuation, spelling, literary devices, comprehension. And then coming to maths, we have numbers, algebra, ratios and proportions, geometry, statistics, and counting and logical word problems. So you can check out our 11 plus revision and practice pack. Now, these are great for kids to recall the concepts that they learned uh, in the recent uh, weeks. So yes, please do check out. So Faz has a question, is this the geometry test? So if you are looking for a subject specific practice, you can go to the 11 plus max topic wise uh, past papers. And over here, you can have a short uh, you know, practice session on geometry. And even, yes, so here, 11 plus max topic wise questions. If you're looking for a very detailed and thorough practice in geometry across all the various subtopics which are there, you can head over to the topic wise paper. And once you're done practicing, if you're looking to have a quick revision session, just check out the 11 plus revision and practice paper. So here under 11 plus papers, you would see the 11 plus revision and practice paper. And here we would have the topic wise uh, practice tests, which you can give to your child for a quick revision. So here again, you can see within geometry, we have detailed out all the subtopics. So you can be sure that you have a thorough understanding of every single subtopic and that you are extremely well prepared for the final examination. 
So Divine is asking, is the goal uh, plan best for child right now, preparing for the 11 plus? Yes, definitely. Gold plan is, a, is an amazing one-stop shop for all Pi Academy website uh, resources. So uh, before we move on to the gold plan, let's talk about the diamond plan. So essentially with the diamond plan, you would be able to unlock all 11 plus resources which are there on Pi Academy. This comes out to around uh, 30,000 plus questions which are there uh, across all subjects, Max, English, everything. So with the diamond plan, you would be able to unlock all these papers that you can see that have been listed here. And uh, with this, you can be assured that you have one year of access to the whole website and you're able to practice all the topics and all subjects. So yes, please do check out the 11 plus diamond plan. It would unlock the complete website for you, which includes all the 11 plus past papers, which you see over here. It includes all our video courses and it also includes our mock exams. So we have subject specific mock exams. Uh, depending on the school that you are targeting, depending on the subjects that that particular school is going to be testing you at, you can check out our mock exam. So we have Max and English, Max and Verbal, Nonverbal and Verbal, and you can check these out. We also have ISCB and CAT for practice tests. So do check out our 11 plus diamond plan. And in general, if you're looking to start attempting your mock exams, head over to the mock exam section on our website. So Shailish has a question, can we get the diamond plan for less than a year? Yes, we do have the 11 plus gold plan. I request uh, our support team to share the link with you over chat. Advaita has a question, please share vocabulary list for 11 plus and do you have any crash courses in Easter? Sure, we will be sharing the vocabulary list with you uh, for the 11 plus uh, vocab section and you can head over to the 11 plus courses where we would soon be rolling out all our Easter courses. So for right now, you can see the comprehension Easter course. Soon we would be having our creative writing, geometry, algebra, verbal reasoning, non-verbal reasoning, all our crash, uh, Easter crash courses. And these are live tutoring classes where we generally have around three to four students for one tutor. So it's an extremely interactive session. Uh, with all our Easter courses, we have a mock mock test at the end of the course so it's not just passive learning but we make sure that the child is tested and the child gets to practice what they are learning on a daily basis so even in comprehension we have a mock test at the end of the course as you can see here we've mentioned that the final mock exam would be on 6th of april so these mock exams are conducted online and each student has one attempt to check whether they have understood their concepts well and with this, they would also be able to see the leaderboard and they can see the scores of their peers and see where they stand. So do check out our Easter courses. We would be adding more courses now uh, across the next uh, one or two days. And you would be able to see the various things that each course comes with. We have daily homework for all our courses, all our Easter courses, and we also have the final mock exams. So do keep an eye out on this section on the banner, as you can see, our 11 plus exam Easter mastery courses. Divine has a question, is the Easter course necessary if you get the gold plan? So if you get the gold plan, you would be able to unlock our 11 plus video courses. And the only difference between the Easter courses and the video courses is that the Easter courses are live. They are more interactive and they give the child the uh, opportunity to clear their doubts with the tutor as they're learning. So if that is something that is important to you, you can go ahead with the Easter courses. But if not, with the gold plan, you would be able to unlock the video courses and you would have access to, again, you'll have access to daily homeworks. You will have access to the final mocks and to our videos. So if you have the gold plan in hand, you can check out the video courses. So I think Yes, we have another question. Are Easter courses suitable for year four students as well? So Easter courses are more suitable for year five students, students who are attempting the examination in 2024 because these are crash courses and we do expect the child to be uh, familiar with the foundation. 
But if you are looking for something for a year four student, you can check out our 11 plus exam foundation year four Sunday classes. So these classes are focusing on the fundamentals of the 11 plus exam. They would not be too overwhelming for the child because we take them from the very basics and we make sure that they are completely ready for the 11 plus exams next to next year. So you can check out the year four foundation classes. We have a very detailed syllabus for the upcoming three months as you can check out here on the website. And you would also get homeworks on the portal. These are online homeworks that you would have access to. You would have access to the lecture notes that our tutors use for these sessions. So I would recommend that you check out our year four foundation Sunday classes. And Divine has a question. Does the gold plan come with the live weekend classes? Yes, it does. It does. So thank you so much, guys. I think we have reached the end of the masterclass. And I would just like to uh, reiterate, you can check out our website and use the coupon code, which is master30. Check out all the past papers, our video courses, and the Easter courses, which we are adding soon. And uh, all the best for your 11th examinations. Thank you. Thank you, Sneharsh.